This is the new Vivo X90 Pro, Vivo's latest flagship phone for 2023. For a price of $800 or some 70 to 75,000 in India, it has all the flagship features that you can think of, including a big one inch camera sensor with Zeiss optimization, a curved 10 bit AMOLED display, the new Diamond City 9200 chipset, and so much more. It's crazy to see that Vivo has only been making truly high end flagship phones for just about two to three years now, and the improvements they've been able to make with every generation year after year is nothing short of spectacular. This year, however, Vivo is not launching its most high-end smartphone, the X90 Pro Plus, in the global market, which I think is a smart move from the company because despite all the progress, Vivo isn't still quite there yet to compete against the likes of the iPhone 14 Pro Max or the Galaxy S23 Ultra. Those phones are just on a different level, in my opinion. But with the X90 Pro, Vivo is not trying to beat them anyway. Instead, it's trying to undercut the set competition in terms of price to performance ratio. And I think they have absolutely nailed it with this one. I am currently testing the OnePlus 11 and I've already reviewed the iQOO 11 and the one thing I know for sure about both these phones is that they have compromised in one way or the other to maintain a fairly aggressive price tag. But the Vivo X90 Pro is a perfect example of a balanced flagship phone, although you got to pay a little bit more here. Okay, let me start the review with the unboxing and here you get a pretty standard box package. But like most Chinese brands, Vivo has also been generous enough to include a charger inside the box. Here we get a 120 watt charger with both uh, PD and PPS support. Then we get a Type-C to Type-C cable and a good quality transparent case. All right, the first thing I really like about the X90 Pro is its design. Vivo has tried a different approach to make the phone look unique and modern, and I think the company's vision has worked out really well in implementation. This leather finish at the back looks classy and elegant, and I am 100% sure business users will love this design. And since the phone's not that wide either, I also like how it feels in my hands. It has a nice grip thanks to the gentle curves on both sides. And although it weighs 215 grams, it does not feel that heavy because of the even weight distribution. This leather back also does not catch any fingerprint smudges or dust, and it's not that slippery either. Now, you might be thinking that this big protruding camera lens wobbles a lot when keeping the phone face down, but it surprisingly doesn't. Plus, Vivo has not compromised on an IP rating as the X90 Pro comes with an IP68 dust and waterproofing. The only thing that I personally am not a big fan of as far as the design is concerned is the curved display. I don't mind curved displays as long as they're subtle, but this just looks old school and reminds me of older Galaxy S series phones. But if you can look past this, the quality of this display is actually excellent. Obviously, it cannot get as bright as the iPhone 14 Pro Max or the Galaxy S23 Ultra's display, but it gets the job done just fine. By the way, this is not a Samsung-made AMOLED panel like we see on most flagship phones, but it is in fact made by BOE, a Chinese display maker. So it's good to see competition in this space. Overall, I really like the quality of this panel. It has an almost bezel-less design, the colors are nice here, and it also supports 2160Hz PWM dimming, which protects your eyes from screen flickering. You can even customize the color profile of the screen with four modes to choose from, and the Zeiss natural option with its subtle and uh, not as punchy color saturation level is exactly the way I like it. You also get a very reliable in-display fingerprint sensor here, which is definitely one of the fastest that I've seen on a smartphone. Weirdly, it is not an ultrasonic one like we saw on last year's Vivo's X80 Pro. While its placement has also changed, I would have preferred it around here instead, but I must say I got used to it pretty easily, so no complaints there. Vivo has also included good haptics on the X90 Pro. Pair that with a speedy dot sampling rate, I have really enjoyed interacting with this display no matter what I'm doing, like scrolling through the menus, typing up messages, or even playing games. 
I also like its speakers. It's as good as the one you'd find on an iPhone or a Galaxy device. As for performance, Vivo has reserved the more expensive Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 chip for the X90 Pro Plus. So for this guy, Vivo went with MediaTek's flagship Dimensity 9200 chip, which is surprisingly really, really good. MediaTek has been doing really well in the mobile chipset industry in the past couple of years, and the Dimensity 9200 here delivers big time. I have been using a lot of phones with Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 these days and honestly, you really can't find the difference between the two. Both of them feel equally fast. Vivo has also used a big vapor chamber cooling system here, so I've never felt the phone getting warm under basic tasks. In uh, some games, I was even getting better thermals from the X90 Pro than the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 powered iQ11. Here you can enjoy 60fps gaming in the highest of settings in both PUBG and Genshin Impact with almost 100% stability most of the time. However, some games like Asphalt 9 and Mech Arena are still not optimized to run at high FPS, but they should be fixed with the next update. Overall, I am really impressed with just how capable the Dimensity 9200 is. And if you want to learn more, I've also made a dedicated video comparing this chipset with the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 and Apple's A16 Bionic that you can check out from somewhere here. Now, as far as the UI is concerned, I think Vivo has made some massive improvements in this aspect compared to how Fontouch OS was back in the day. Still, uh, it could take some time for you to get used to it because it's a little bit different than most other Android skins out there. And I won't say that it's on the same level as stock Android experience on Pixel phones or Samsung's One UI, but Vivo has optimized their OS really well. With 12 gigs of RAM and a faster UFS 4.0 storage, apps load instantly and they can stay in memory for a long time. So once you reopen them again, there's no delay or such either. Even in terms of battery, the optimization Vivo has done is quite appreciable. The X90 Pro has a typical 4870mAh battery and I was able to get an entire day's worth of endurance in medium to heavy usage. What's even better is that its 120 watt charger can fill in the phone from 0 to 100% in less than 30 minutes and it supports 50 watt wireless charging as well. So until now, I've discussed the design, the display and the performance aspects in which the Vivo X90 Pro gets straight A's. The thing is though, even cheaper phones like the OnePlus 11 and the iQ11 deliver on those fronts. So the main reason why you're paying that extra money here is for the cameras. And the first thing I absolutely love about the X90 Pro's cameras is how great its portraits are. Usually when it comes to shooting human subjects, iPhones, Pixels and Samsung phones come to mind and Chinese phones were never actually in the same league as the competition. But the Vivo X90 Pro has genuinely surprised me. 50mm lenses are widely regarded as one of the best options for taking portraits and X90 Pro's 50 megapixel portrait camera with a 50mm equivalent focal length takes absolutely stunning shots. They uh, almost look like they're taken from a professional DSLR camera. Take this image for example. The lens flare, the depth estimation and background bokeh are just perfect here. And not just that, I think the Zeiss optimization has made it even better because the phone can maintain great skin tone and subject focus as well. I will go as far as to say that in many scenarios, I will pick X90 Pro's portraits over those of most other high-end phones. Its 32 megapixel front camera delivers equally good looking selfies with good HDR details. With all this, I had high expectations from its main camera lens too, which is the beloved Sony 989 one inch sensor. The same one we saw on the Xiaomi 12S Ultra. But it seems like Vivo has not optimized the sensor all too well, especially in daylight conditions. You might know that I use the iPhone 14 Pro Max as my primary phone and switching to this, I immediately noticed how Vivo's photos don't have the same level of detail, the same level of subject focus and the balance that I'm used to with an iPhone. 
Similarly, the X90 Pro also has something called Zeiss Natural Color Optimization, but I found it to be a little inconsistent. While you do get neutral, close to natural colors with this mode turned on, in some instances, the images look too pale and not pleasing to the eyes. And when turning it off, this Sony sensor occasionally struggles with maintaining accurate color details too. X90 Pro's 12 megapixel ultra wide sensor is just okay ish as well and not quite as good as other flagship phones. But under low light conditions, Vivo's image processing and the big one inch sensor really shines. Even in pitch dark situations, you can get great looking photos with good details and almost zero noise, especially when turning on the night mode. In terms of videos though, Vivo is still playing catch up with something like the iPhone 14 Pro Max. Yes, you can shoot up to 8K here and the 4K recordings turn out uh, pretty stable as well, but I will still pick an iPhone when it comes to shooting videos any day. And the fact that the X90 Pro can do just 1080p 60fps selfie videos is a big disappointment for a flagship phone. Anyway, Vivo's native camera app is also pretty interesting. There are so many options and settings to play with here, like uh, you have a bunch of lighting and bokeh effects for portraits that mimic different professional size lenses, an AI group portrait mode, and there's also a few other options, including astro mode and super moon, which make low life photography more fun. Okay, it's conclusion time. So if you look at the flagship phones in the $800 to $1,000 price range, you will find that most of them have some weird unsettling trade-off since brands are most interested in pushing more expensive phones instead. The iPhone 14 and 14 Plus, for example, carry a last-gen processor, a slower 60Hz display, and not the same level of cameras as the Pro models. Samsung also skips its premium cameras on the Vanilla S23 and S23 Plus, whereas Google's Pixel 7 Pro does not compete in terms of performance. So compared to all of them, the Vivo X90 Pro stands out as a balanced offering that really does not compromise much. Therefore, if you don't want to spend a whole lot on those full-fledged flagship phones, the X90 Pro is an excellent choice for the price. However, if you want to play it safe and are willing to spend well over $1,000, the iPhone 14 Pro Max or the Galaxy S23 Ultra is a no-brainer. Alright guys, that was all for this video. I hope you liked it and if you did, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. And while you're there, don't forget to subscribe. Till then, I'm Pratima Adhikari and I will see you in my next video.